Hello, Miss Teresa here from South Hill Bible Church. Good to see you again. Even though I can't see you, I can in my mind. And I'm happy to be here with you today. And it's time for our children's Bible class. So let me come sit down and we'll get started. Well, I hope everyone is enjoying the little bit different and warmer weather. Uh, today is expected to be close to 90 degrees, which is pretty hot. And uh, I am looking forward to warmer weather coming, but I'm not so sure this warm weather is going to stay. But that's okay. God gives us all kinds of weather, doesn't he? Yes. All right, well, let's get started with our prayer. And as you know, there are four kinds of prayers. There is I love you prayer, or a prayer of adoration. I'm sorry prayer, prayers of confession. I'm thankful prayers, prayers of thanksgiving. And please prayers, or prayers of supplication. So I think that today that we will do thanksgiving prayers. All right? Okay, and I have a special prayer bear today with me and he is a polar bear prayer bear yeah he's a big one isn't he yes he is so i hope you have a stuffed animal that was one of your favorites that you would like to pray with today but if you and if you don't that's fine too and if you have your stuffed animal go ahead and grab it otherwise just fold your hands and we'll bow our heads and we'll get started all right Dear God, thank you so much for everything that you have given us. Thank you for our families and our friends, food to eat, a warm house to live in, a cool house to live in when it's hot. And God, we thank you for sending you, for you sending us your son, Jesus, who died in place to take over our sin. And thank you, God, for giving us the time that we're having right now with our families and keeping us mindful that you are there for us and will always keep us safe and know exactly when we'll be able to meet up again and will make it safe for us. Thank you, God, for all these things. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. I'm going to put my Snoopy dog over here and, excuse me, Snoopy bear. We call him Snoopy. Well, let's go back to our lesson now, okay? And let's do a little review first. Do you remember what we talked about last week? Uh, let's see. Last week, we learned how David sinned when he wanted Bathsheba for his wife. Do you remember that? Mm-hmm. She was already married to one of his soldiers named Uriah. And David had Uriah killed to cover up his sin. God was very displeased with David. And he sent Nathan the prophet to tell David a parable. Do you remember what a parable is? Yes, it's a story, a story that gives a message. And Nathan told David a parable about a rich man and a poor man. The rich man had many flocks of sheep, and a poor man had one little baby ewe, and he killed the pet lamb of the poor man to feed a traveler. Nathan told David, you are the man. David understood that he had sinned just like the rich man in the story. He confessed his sin and begged God to forgive him and cleanse his heart. Do you recall this? Oh, it's right there. Do you remember that? Uh huh. There it is. It was last week's lesson. Yep. So, and what did God do? Well, God forgave David, but David still faced consequences. His wife, Bathsheba, was going to have a baby. And God told him that his son, baby would die. But, but God told David that he would also have troubles in his family, not just outside of his family, but in his family. Today we'll see what kind of troubles 
came through David's son, Absalom. Absalom was David's third son, and his mother was a princess. Here he is right here. See that? Mm -hmm. Yes, the daughter of the king of another country. When Absalom was a young man, he became angry at his oldest brother, Ammon, for hurting his sister. Absalom decided to punish his brother by having him killed. Now, does this sound familiar? Absalom committed the same sin as his father who killed Uriah. But remember how David was very for, sorry for his sins and asked God to forgive him? Well, not Absalom. Nope. He didn't he seem sorry at all. Let's find out a little bit more about him. Let's go to 2 Samuel 14, 25. So I'll let everybody find that with your Bible. Go to 2 Samuel chapter 14, verse 25. Okay, everybody got it? Okay. In all Israel, there was not a man so highly praised for his handsome appearance as Absalom. From the top of his head to the sole of his foot, there was no blemish in him. Now, you know what a blemish is? Yes, that's right. A blemish is like a, a little scar or something wrong. He was perfect, like the perfect... We call Jesus the perfect lamb. Well, he was perfect in appearance. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we found out exactly what he looked like, didn't we? He was really good looking. He was handsome, very, very handsome. Yes, he was. All right, so we're going to do a little skit today about Absalom. And this is going to be Absalom. Do you see how Absalom has these long, we're going to call this his long hair. And even though this is a lion, we're going to pretend that this is a man and that this is his long, beautiful hair. All right? So I'm going to talk and I'm going to pretend that Absalom is talking. But he's Absalom today. Okay. Are you talking about me? It's true. I am the most good looking man in all of Israel. Oh, hello, Prince Absalom. I've heard it said that you are perfect from your head to your feet. That's me, handsome from head to toe. Oh, yes. Is it true that you only cut your hair about once a year? Yes. Actually, I'll be cutting my hair tomorrow. Did you know that when I cut it, it weighs five pounds? That's a lot of hair with weight on your head. Woo! Yes, I'm proud of my hair and good looks. In fact, I think I'm so great, I should be king of Israel. Hmm, but your father David is king. Yes, I know he is, but I'm working on that. What do you mean? Well, for one thing, I make sure everyone notices me when I go out. I ride in my own chariot and have 50 men run in front of me to clear the way. Wow, I guess everyone knows when you're coming, don't they? Of course. Not only that, but I'm making friends with as many people as possible, including these fine young people watching this show today. So you're being kind to the people of Israel? Sort of. I tell them that I'm their friend and greet them like I would greet my own family. That must make them feel good. Yes, they make makes them think I like them. Ha 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 ha. You mean you're tricking them? Why, yes, I guess you could say that. I tell them that if I were king, I would do a much better job than my father, David. Whew, so you really are trying to take the throne from your father. Yes, that's what it's all about. I must go now. I shall steer the hearts of the people of Israel and rule over them all. Ha 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 ha. Wow. It sounds like Absalom sure let people know that he was a royal prince. Oh yes, there he is. Really showing everyone he's a handsome prince and he wants to be the prince of Israel. Does he seem proud of himself? 
Or does he seem humble and kind? Hmm. Well, humble would be not what he is. Humble is when you love that what you have and appreciate what you have, but you do not go around showing off like Absalom was. So I don't think he's humble at all. What do you think? Hmm. Absalom was up to something. And it wasn't something good. Absalom acted very friendly to the people until many of them started thinking that maybe Absalom really was better than King David. Uh-oh. The Bible tells us that Absalom stole the hearts of the people from David. Hmm. Oh, boy. Finally, it was time to make his move against his father. Absalom wanted to steal the throne from David so that he could be the king. When David heard what was happening, he took his family and his fighting men and left the city of Jerusalem. It was a sad and scary time for David. He was forced to leave his home. He, he and all those with him cried as they left. David knew Absalom and his men would chase him and try to kill them all. So they had to leave, didn't they? Yes. But who do you think David turned to to help during this time? That's right, he turned to God. He prayed for help and God protected David and those with him and they escaped. Some of David's friends stayed in Jerusalem in spite as spies. God used these men to help David by sending him messages as Absalom got ready to fight against his own father. Meanwhile, David also gathered an army he had a lot of strong soldiers who had fought with him for many years. There were men known as mighty men, and David trusted all of them. When it was time for battle against Absalom and his army, David's commanders wouldn't let him go with them. They didn't want David to get hurt or killed. So David's three commanders led their men out against Absalom and his army. The battle had begun. Well, who thinks Absalom and his men will win the battle? Do you think that they will win? Hmm, and who is on David's side? That's right, God. Who thinks David's men will win? Hmm, I think I'm on thinking David's gonna win. What do you think? Well, let's find out. Let's read 2 Samuel 18, verses 6 to 9, okay? So let's turn to 2 Samuel chapter 18. First, we're just going to read verses 6 through 8. Okay? Everybody got it? Turn to your Bibles. Okay? David's army marched out of the city to fight Israel, and the battle took place in the forest of Ephraim. There Israel's troops were routed by David's men, and the casualties that day were great. 20,000 men. The battle spread out over the whole countryside and the forest swallowed up more men that day than the sword. Wow. Where did they fight the battle? Was it the forest of Ephraim? Yes, it was, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. And David's men won the battle. Absalom's army lost. Well, who, what does it say that killed or devoured more people, the sword or the forest? That's right, the forest. Wow, some men were killed by other soldiers with swords, but the forest was so thick with trees that some men died just trying to run through the forest. Hmm, and I think that might have happened to Absalom. Let's find out here. But what about Absalom? Listen to what happened to him. Okay, let's go back now. 2 Samuel 18, verse 9. Now, Absalom happened to meet David's men. He was riding his mule, and as the mule went under the thick branches of a large oak, Absalom's hair got caught in the tree. He was left hanging in midair while the mule he was riding kept on going. Oh boy, I think you can see that picture pretty clearly here, can't we? Mm-hmm. So, remember, 
We talked about Absalom only cut his hair once a year. Well, the long hair that he had maybe got caught in that branches of the great oak tree, huh? Yeah. But his mule kept running, leaving him hanging there helplessly. Commander Joab hurried to the tree with some of his men and they killed Absalom. The battle for the kingdom was over. David was still the rightful king. God saved David from Absalom's evil plans and gave him men a great victory. David was extremely sad that his son had to die. But God told David he would have trouble in his family as a consequence of his sin. And this was trouble in his family, wasn't it? Absolutely. Absalom had sinned too. But he didn't turn from his sin or ask God to forgive him. No. Instead, he let sins like cov coveting, pride, and hatred grow in his heart until God used this bat battle to punish him. Wow. Well, when we sin, we need to certainly ask God for forgiveness, don't we? Yes. Yes. We don't want to be like Absalom. No, no, no. We want to be like David. That's right. All right. Well, that was really fun. And uh, Absalom says goodbye. Now we're going to, William is going to join me. And we're going to sing our song and play a couple games. All right. Come on, William. All right. Say hi, William. Hello. All right, we're going to start with our song. Everybody ready? Okay, here we go. One, two, three. Cast your burden unto Jesus, for he cares for you. Cast your burden unto Jesus, for he cares for you. Higher, 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 higher. Higher, higher, lift up Jesus higher. Higher, 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 lift up Jesus higher. Cast your burden unto Jesus, for he cares for you. Cast your burden unto Jesus, for he cares for you. Lower, 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 stand Satan lower. Lower, 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 lower. Lower, lower, stamp Satan lower. Cast your burden unto Jesus, for he cares for you. Cast your burden unto Jesus, for he cares for you. Higher, 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 higher. Higher, higher, lift up Jesus higher. Lower, 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 lower. Lower, lower, stamp Satan lower. Higher, 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 lift up Jesus higher. Cast your burden unto Jesus, for he cares for you. Cast your burden unto Jesus, for he cares for you. All right, well, that was great. Okay, let's see. Should we do a little Simon Says first? Before we do our balloon game? For sure. Okay, let's do Simon Says first. Okay. So Cecil. Cecil was Absalom today. I it was Cecil. He's, this was Absalom. Oh, we, call him, we call him Cecil. His name, his name here at the house is Cecil, but he was Absalom today. All right. Okay, let's uh, okay, ahead and get and start. Ready? Okay, Simon Says. Simon Says, lift up your left foot. Simon says, lift up your right foot. Simon says, touch your knees. Simon says, turn around. Simon says, turn around again. Turn around again. Oh, did I get ya? Woo, it made me dizzy. All right, William's turn. Simon says, touch your elbow. Simon says, touch your other elbow. Simon says, touch your hips. Touch your nose. Didn't get me. Keep going. Uh, Simon says, turn around. Simon says, turn to the left. Simon says, turn to the right. Turn to the left. Didn't get me again. Keep going. Okay, uh, Simon says touch your neck. 
Simon says touch your head. Simon says touch your ears. Simon says touch your nose. Simon says turn around. Turn around again. Ah! Okay, one more quick one here. All right, Simon says do a jumping jack. Simon says kick up your left leg. Simon says kick up your right leg. Simon says do another jumping jack. Let's jump up and down. Did I get anybody? All right, okay, it's time for the balloon toss game. Everybody got some, there are two balloons. You need two balloons per person. And we have different colors so we know whose balloons. I've got yellow and kind of a goldish brown and William has a green and a red balloon. Woo! All right, when I count to three, we're gonna get started here, okay? One, two, three, go! today. Here, get down a little bit so we can see you better. And uh, we look forward to doing this every week. Uh, we love taping these for you guys. Sure miss you. Can't wait till we can see you at church, but happy to see you here. And we're thinking about you and we love you. So uh, we'll see you again next week. Bye.